Hello there, welcome to Everyday Ordinary Life with Mark. We are going to continue this each and every week, but today is the time that we're devoting to this final week of the book series where we are going through in our life groups, The Ordinary Way. How do we actually live out the ordinary life that God has called us to live? How do we give our everyday ordinary life to God? And again, if you're doing this on your own or if you're a part of a life group, thank you for doing this with us. Uh, we look forward to seeing the results. I would love to hear back from you on the ways in which having this experience together or on your own has changed your way of looking at the way you do life. How's it changed the way that you spend time with your family or how you view your vocation or how you view those goals that God has placed upon your heart? Let me hear back from you on that and this, let this serve as a reminder that this is an ongoing process. So we're going to do that together from now on. I look forward to this journey until Jesus comes again. We're going to get started here in just a minute as we think about how to close this time out together. said this is the final week of the ordinary life life group series and this is a wonderful way to cap it off for each and every one of us i hope that you've had time this week or will find time soon uh, to go through the final part or final sections of the book and this is really the section that talks about how important it is to remember the information you have received and learned through the reading and through the discussion, but also how do you pass this on to other peoples. A couple of passages I reference in the study guide are Psalm 1, which talks about the, the wonderful idea of those who are healthy or planted in the Word of God, those who experience growth or those who base all they are and all they have in the rich truth of God and His glory and His Word. Another passage that's referenced is the well-known Deuteronomy chapter 6 passage. Now, even if you don't know Deuteronomy chapter 6, I'm sure that many of you are familiar with the phrases within it. And one of the, the great things we see is this is a chapter that is often looked at a, as a great foreshadowing of uh, the New Testament. But particularly in this chapter, we see an interesting charge uh, to the people of Israel. Now, a little background there to help us out. If you recall that when Moses is giving the law, certainly there are children in the midst, but, but mainly the adults are, are hearing the Mosaic law. And so, and so Moses is talking to the adults and giving them a charge. And first he begins with this great Shema, the great statement of faith of the Hebrew people in verse four, hear O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. That is the foundational statement. But he goes on to talk about these verses that Jesus will use later. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. Sometimes we think those are just New Testament words. Those are Old Testament words. So he starts by saying, God is the one true God. And if you're going to live for this God, you need to love God with everything you are. And then this is where he gets into speaking to the adults directly, particularly to those who are parents or grandparents. Verse six, though these commandments I have given, I give you today are to be on your hearts and press them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk around the road, when you lie down and when you get up, tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads, write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. We're gonna spend some time this week talking about the influence that parents and grandparents can have on their kids positively as they pour into the kids the knowledge they receive through God's word and through books such as The Ordinary Way that continue to pull from God's word and so that we can learn how to live it out. And it is so important to notice the everyday, ordinary way in which it's taking place. Notice it says uh, to place it around the house uh, to talk about it as you lie down, as, as you get up. In other words, while you're eating food, while you're putting your kids to bed, as you're getting up in the morning, there needs to be this continual talk about the glory of God. And don't take that as that's the only language. You don't want to feel like you have to go to church every day of your life. Some of you may feel that way. But what we're talking about is it just needs to be a part of your normal everyday conversation uh, as you 
pray over food and thank God for it. As you, you talk about your, your day, you pray for one another in that. When you encourage your kids, you remind them that they're beautifully made as God has a plan for them. As you talk to your spouse, you say, I thank God for you. Just day-to-day -day ways in which we can do this. Uh, some of you will have seen images of those who took this very literally and, and uh, took uh, phyla carriers, phylacteries. People say it differently, but these boxes that some will actually, Orthodox Jews will tie them around their forehead. This is where they get this passage. They actually take a little piece of the scrolls of the Old Testament, put it in a box and tie it to themselves. I'm not recommending you tie a box to yourself, but I think it's so important that you get that image in your head, not necessarily on your head, but in your head that says the word of God is so important that we need to keep it with us at all times. And one of the best ways to make sure this goes on from generation to generation is to talk about it. And so in the guide, we're going to be talking about what influence parents and grandparents, other influential adults have uh, in, in their families and in their churches. Uh, and then teachers, whether that be in the church setting or in a home setting, a great opportunity for you to be able to pour into kids and kids of those who have entrusted time, uh, entrusted the kids to you for a time uh, to instruct them. This is a way you can do that. How we're going to close out uh, this week is by revisiting those questions I had you look at last week. And these are those exercises near the end of the book. And the first two exercises, while all of them are important, the first two are the ones I really want you to focus on as a group today and throughout the week. And that is these times for you to examine, look back over the times in your life where you've had accomplishments that you're proud of. And remember, pride is not a bad thing as long as you give glory to God. And then look at the accomplishments of others. What this is going to do is help you remember how God has used you in a positive way in the way that he's made you. It's also going to make you appreciative for the way God has used you. And it's going to make you appreciative for other people and how God has used them. Because sometimes when we doubt that God can use us, we look at other people and we say, God used them. Just maybe he can use me. It is a wonderful thing to be able to do this journey together. And as I began this time with you today, I said, I don't want you to think this is time that is just over as we close the book. This is a time that's gonna keep going as we continue to live our everyday ordinary lives for Christ, which is based upon, again, Romans chapter 12, verse one. Let me say it again. Here's what I want you to do, God helping you. Take your everyday ordinary life. You're sleeping, you're eating, you're going to work, you're walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. That's a challenge that we need to live out each and every day of our lives. Go out and live the ordinary way. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.